space left. It was at Saturday's free practice session, when Johann Oesterberg was on a fast lap heading towards the hairpin turn, when all of a sudden Brent Dillard got in his way and both ended up in a tremendous crash. Well, I was on uh, the race lap and uh, I saw that Brent was uh, uh, pulling off the course and uh, I still on the racing line and well, he decided to go inside the turn again and we collided. My angle that I went to the turn, I didn't see it in the mirror. And that one was on me. I ran into Osterberg, and uh, you know, I feel really bad for him. You know, he was pretty mad, and he deserves to be mad. At first, it looked like this would already be the end for both at the Norwegian Grand Prix because of the quite heavy damage on Dillard's and Osterberg's boat. But Dillard's team announced they can fix the damage and will be ready to enter the qualifying sessions. Johan Osterberg, unfortunately, was facing some more serious work on his boat. I'm out for the qualifying, that's, uh, that's no point of trying to do it. The transom is broken and uh, Mölgard is here and uh, trying to fix it now, so we're working on it for tomorrow. This means Österberg has to enter Sunday's qualifying race to get one of the final spots on the grid. Buys in the way. If you talk about racing at the limit, it happens that you come too close to a turning boy or sometimes even hit one. But what happened in all Saturday's sessions in Tonsberg was special. Not one or two buoys were in the way of a boat, not less than six times. A session had to be stopped to replace one or even two turn boys. So seeing the rescue team taking care of a loose buoy was a quite common picture on Saturday. Danger from the sky. It felt like being in a James Bond movie when a helicopter appeared over the race course to take pictures. What looked very spectacular at first got quite dangerous shortly after when the helicopter got closer and closer to the race course so the downdraft could affect the race boats. This situation led to the weirdest red flag so far in Formula 2. The qualifying. Having a good starting position at the Norwegian Grand Prix is more important than anywhere else because of the tight and challenging race course in Tonsberg. So already Q2 seemed to be more like a race than a qualifying session when the top 15 boats tried to get their ticket for the top 10 shootout. Q2 was uh, so much difficult for me, many boats and uh, it was rough. At the end, the Kaunas race winner Rashid Al Kemzi made it into Q3 as well as Stefan Hagen who is highly motivated after his strong performance at the first race of the year. And also strong was Brent Dillard who recovered from his crash in free practice and also kept his chances for pole with P6 in this qualifying session. It was a bit more work to do for Norwegian Tobias Mintekas, who posted the 8th quickest time in Q2 just at the end of the session, which was a last minute save to his chances for pole. But in Q3, with 37.97 seconds, Mintekas posted the quickest lap time of the whole weekend so far. Too quick for Dillard, who ended up on a fourth starting position, and also Stefan Hagen couldn't beat the time of Mintekas. Hagen's time at the end, 38.4, good enough for a third spot on the grid. I had some propeller problems, but uh, we can fix it for the next time, and uh, it was all what I can do in the Q3, so I'm very happy with the position. So now it was up to Kaunas race winner Rashid Al Kemzi to beat Mintekas. And his first lap was slower than Mintekas, but Al Kemzi put everything he got into his final chance for pole, which resulted in exactly the same lap time than Mintekas, 37.97. We had the same time and then they go back to the first lap and he had a better time there, so I was pushed down to the number two, but anyway, he's, he's so close on this level, so I shall, I'm quite happy. I finished the first lap with time 38, then I surprised with the time 37, and it was same to Boyes, and uh, I, I do it. So once again, Rashid Al Kamsi will start from pole position with Tobias Mintika second and Stefan Hagen third. By the way, the same starting order like in Kaunas and what we know from there is, all three of them were leading the Lithuanian Grand Prix. So the Grand Prix of Norway once again could become a real thriller.